Namaste everyone. In the previous two sessions, I talked about the need and vision for holistic value-based education, which is a theme of our panel discussion in the online international conference on human values in higher education from November 22nd to 24th. Now in this session, I'm going to talk about the implementation. So how do we implement value-based education? So there has to be a program at the level of individual. There could be some program of action that can be taken up. So at a personal level, we can see that we essentially want to understand harmony and live in harmony. So that understanding and living has to be ensured at a personal level. For that, we have to explore the proposals put forward to us without assuming them to be true or false, but rather verifying them on our own right at the level of our natural acceptance and also validating in our living. So this is called self-exploration. So through the course inputs, the student gets some proposals, right? And they're not a set of do's and don'ts or should and shouldn't, but rather they are proposals regarding understanding of harmony at every level of living. And the student listens to the proposals, verifies within at the level of natural acceptance, validates in one living, so that becomes a part of one's understanding. But this is not going to happen just by attending a course or by listening you know, to a few lectures. It is something which one has to go through continuously. And this is a gradual development that takes place at the level of consciousness in every human being when one goes through this process. So with self-exploration, we also have to ensure self-awareness. So when I am exploring within, verifying within, I also become more and more aware of my current state of being. What is going on in my thoughts? What desires am I acquiring within? What are the expectations that I am having from myself or others? Okay, what are my deep rooted assumptions? I become more and more aware of my current state of being. And with that, I am also able to evaluate my current state of being vis-a-vis -vis my natural acceptance. So there are three components of the program that can be taken up at the individual level. And that is self-exploration, self-awareness, and self-evaluation. And with that, I am able to purify my current state of being and be what I really want to be as a human being, as a self coexisting with the body. So this is a rigorous process. Uh, consistently, I have to keep on working. And that has to be taken up through education so that every child who enters primary education and by the time one accomplishes the higher education is able to ensure this kind of competence within oneself. Now, to make it happen at the level of society, we will have to develop programs. So to begin with, we can start with uh, people's education program where we can discuss the vision for such an education to different sections of society. So when I look at the way we went about, we started discussing the proposals through workshops across different sections and different state of people. We talked to the policy makers, we talked to the people living in the cities, in the villages, to the tribals, people who are there in the system, people who are there in the jails, right? We talked with the children, we talked with the adults, with the old people, so that we could get to see that whether this really is able to make some change in the people. Now, if one goes through this kind of program, then maybe in 10 years, one is able to assure oneself that, yes, this is going to certainly transform my life. And the next 10 years, one can ensure this kind of process in the other human being also right so that the other human being will also able to transform oneself and maybe going by this process we can see that within 100 years this kind of transformation is very much possible on this planet the second kind of program could be education sanskar program where it becomes a part of formal education earlier it was informal a people's education program we can sit with the people in the evening we can sit in the panchayas we can sit in the where in places where people can assemble together and then we can discuss. But when it becomes a part of the regular education program, then we have a developed curriculum, we have syllabus, we have evaluation methods. And through that, if you take it, then people with right understanding, right feeling, or at least working consistently for that, who are the teachers in the education system, can take this proposal effectively to the students so that they can also verify and validate in one's living. And if you go that way, then maybe the process gets accomplished in 20 to 50 years. When we have this kind of program implemented in all dimensions of a society, not only education, but also in the justice system, in the production system, in the exchange system, 
then the program can be much, much faster. And we can be able to fulfill a human goal. We can be able to ensure harmony in the society going by these kinds of programs. And if you look at the orderliness in the society that can emerge from here. So if I'm an individual, I live in a family. If I share this proposal to my family members, then my family gets in order. There is peace and harmony in the family. There's feeling of prosperity in the family. There's a good sense of relationship in the family. And I can participate as a family in the family cluster. Maybe 10 families around my family. And going by that, it can be gradual progression. And we can see that how family can be a building block of universal human order, a world family. So at the level of individual, we need to ensure self-exploration. At the level of society, we need to ensure people's education, education and star program, and a program for undivided society and universal human order. Now, if you look at the role of educational institutions or the corporate universities, the government, so it has to provide the environment for such a human education when we are deciding about the policies in education, when we are making out the strategies, when we are making the budget, being the government or as chancellor of a university or vice chancellor of a university, then we have to look into these aspects. And then we have to have some programs so that we can develop the faculty, we can develop the management, we can develop leaders in education. So we have to provide this kind of conducive atmosphere. And we can begin with including some course inputs in the education, but gradually we have to make the whole education value-based. Why only talk about value in one course? Why not let every course be based on values, isn't it? And then we can go for value-based living also. So if you look at three steps in which this whole process can be accomplished, which is value education, value-based education, and value-based living. And that would essentially mean that teachers and students are living harmoniously together right? Teaching and learning together, living as a family. And that institution becomes a building block of the universal order. And certainly the regulatory bodies have a huge role to play here by including parameters and giving them appropriate weightage in their policies and also facilitating the process. Now, let me mention here the steps taken by AICT, which has been very significant in the implementation of value education programs across the country. AICT is All India Council for Technical Education, which is the governing body for all the technical institutions in the country. And in 2017, they implemented a three-week mandatory student induction program. Then gradually, they also included a mandatory three-credit course in the second year. And recently, they have also included minor degree in human values. There are also provisions for faculty induction programs. So when a new faculty joins an institution, the faculty has to undergo a workshop focused on human values. And then AICT has also been supporting leadership and management development programs where the leaders in education come together, discuss the proposal, and try to implement at their own level. In addition, AICT has been nominating institutions as nodal centers of value education across the country. And some of the nodal centers have also become regional centers. They are able to influence the region around the institution. And the fundamental work of policy, developing guidelines and process for holistic value-based education, as well as developing teachers, administrators, and policymakers has been done extensively across every state in India, let me say. So far, we have been able to have more than 85,000 faculty who have gone through workshops. And let me say that this whole effort for value education is being done on a pro bono basis as volunteers. We do not take any kind of remuneration from any kind of work. And there's a huge team of more than 500 volunteers who are working beyond their working uh, hours in the institution to make this happen, to implement such inputs in the educational institutions, and also trying to work for harmonious, orderly society. So this was a brief coverage of what we have been trying to do to implement value-based education. And when you come for the panel discussion, either as a delegate or a panelist, you'll be able to see the views of other people also who have been making effort in this direction. So I would like to welcome you for participating in the panel discussion. Thank you.